Can we go ahead and ask you to uh, read the legal disclaimers? Happy to. The purpose of this call is to provide investors with an update on Metaval's business developments with a primary focus on its subsidiary collection sites. The views, information, or opinions expressed by our partners are solely those of the individual presenters and do not necessarily represent the views of Metaval and or its directors, officers, or employees. Metavolve is not responsible for and has not in all cases verified for accuracy any of the information to, to be provided by our partners on this call. During this call, Metavolve may make statements that contain forward-looking information within the meaning of applicable Canadian securities legislation. Forward-looking information will include, but is not limited to, statements with respect to the results of collection sites cubes, the proposed rollout of additional testing sites, the pursuit by Metavolve of other opportunities, including vaccines, and the merits or potential returns of any such opportunities. Forward-looking information is subject to known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors that may cause actual results to be materially different from the conclusions, forecasts, or projections expressed or implied by such forward-looking information. Certain material factors and assumptions have been applied in drawing the conclusions or making forecasts or projections reflected in the forward-looking information. A description of the factors that could affect and the assumptions underlying forward-looking information can be found in Metavol's annual information form, financial statements, and accompanying management discussion and analysis, as well as public disclosure documents that are available for your review under Metavol's profile on CDAR. Participants should not place undue reliance on forward-looking information. Metavolv does not undertake to up update any forward-looking information except in accordance with applicable securities laws. Thank you, Doug. Great, Aaron. Thank you very much and welcome everyone. I'll introduce a couple of our guests that will be uh, bringing you up to date on a, some of the developments in a couple of our important areas. Uh, first, it's uh, Dr. Peruz Kavapur. He will be bringing us up to date with the Marvel Diagnostics work and Dr. Glenn Copeland. Dr. Copeland will be bringing us up to date with what we are advancing in our telediagnostics and the progress we've made in the telediagnostics side. I'll be taking time to update on collection sites and, and Nutrell. I'll also give some overall updates on some of the other programs that we are uh, working on currently. Uh, I will go ahead and start and um, turn it over to Dr. Kavapur and the team at Marvel Diagnostics. Thank you, Doug. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, glad to be here uh, for an update. Um, First of all, as we're um, almost finishing up the first month of this partnership um, with uh, Metavol, um, we have finishing up uh, several contracts for manufacturing, both for the manufacturing of second phase of our Blowfish device, which is a collection of the breath, as well as a scanner uh, device we're in negotiation to have a scanner for the detection, uh, which will come up in a couple of months. Um, the very exciting part of what we're doing right now, uh, as I mentioned in the last call, is a clinical trial has begun. And we start actually because the cases are lower in Southern California at UCLA Hospital. We're actually starting with a partnership at uh, uh, Louisiana LSU Health in uh, Shreveport. We have started, uh, we sent some devices, many, about 250 devices so far to them to start the testing. And uh, from what I heard yesterday, they suspected two COVID positive patients. They did a nasal swab and also uh, side by side as is required by uh, EUA, FDA for, um, and we got tested and we're waiting for the results. Hopefully we get the side by side. That would be very exciting, first of its kind. And uh, definitely we will um, keep everybody posted. There will be a, a PR comes out of UCLA, LSU Health, uh, together, they're actually we're working on it for announcing this collaboration between uh, multiple university and uh, Marvel Diagnostics, of course. So that's uh, where we are right now, and we're very excited. I'm actually monitoring my news feed to see if we get the result back. I'm pretty pumped up about it. So that's where we are. This is basically this is the end of our first month uh, in this partnership with Medibol. Um, if anybody have any questions, more than happy to answer. Great, Dr. Proust, thank you very much for that. Um, you, your results, you, when do you anticipate seeing the majority of the results you require for the FDA? Well, the, the first part that we are, we are working on right now is just wanna make sure everything's set, um, hopefully by, by a month or so. We are, we are we making the devices, we actually signed a contract to actually make the commercial device. Um, we are, I guess Leila and uh, Dr. Mimoman 
who's in charge of the business side of uh, Marvel Diagnostic can comment on our contract with a manufacturer who's going to make that, which that result should be the one that goes to EUA. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, Doc, um, as mentioned, uh, we are exactly on a schedule. And uh, based on our meeting with FDA consultant and our conversation with FDA, we think it's possible for us to get um, the data we need for FDA uh, in two months. And yeah, less than a two months, but we're going to be complete for that. All it, the it's a little bit depends on the number of the patients that's going to come because it's fluctuating now with the everything, but that adding Louisiana State University Health Insurance Report has been very useful for us. So because they have much higher rates of uh, COVID compared to Southern California. Okay, great. I'll take the time now, bring people up to speed with uh, what we're doing on collection sites. Uh, collection sites, as we announced, uh, we went from a very, very high January of um, over well over 70,000 tests to a February where we did over 30,000. The March trend continued very you know, much in that slightly slower pace, but we have seen a fairly steady state continue throughout the month of March. We've had a pretty solid uh, number of tests that have been continuing on a, you know, virtually the same numbers on a daily basis. Right now, we currently have about 68 facilities on the ground. We have about 48 fully operating. Uh, the 48 that are operating include eight with our franchise partner at Besser. Uh, a few of the things we're doing is we're looking, taking a look at some of the sites that are best set up to be our telediagnostic areas. And we're going to be uh, doing some work and we'll talk in a few minutes about that in terms of uh, beginning to pilot some of our telediagnostics in some of the sites that demographically make sense. Uh, but we're making sure that we work very closely with our partners. Our major retail partner continues to be Simon. We're also seeing good performance in uh, the Simon site. So we're very much focused on uh, working within the Simon network. Uh, they've been a good partner to deal with and we look forward to continuing to deal with them. We're also adding some new tests and probably the one I'm uh, most interested and excited about is a test that allows for the monitoring of an individual's immunity level. It's a score system that actually gives you a immunity scorecard, so to speak, that can give you either what your immunity is like post COVID or what your immunity is like after having and receiving the vaccine. So that's going to be a test where uh, because we so little is known on the actual uh, immunity that we get from either having COVID or to in many ways from having the vaccine, I think this will be an important test that we can begin to advertise out to our hundreds of thousands of, uh, of patients that we have in our database as a way to continually find out whether or not they're registering the level of immunity that would make somebody comfortable. Um, I've had a few questions on vaccines. We are actually very well into discussion uh, in California with a vaccine program. We have actually used the same uh, consultant for uh, government affairs that we've used that was able to get us our waiver in California. Uh, we've had been able to get support letters from the California Medical Association, support letters from the governor's office, as well as from state assembly to Blue Shield, which are the organizers of the program in California. They will be the ones running the J&J &J vaccine program. The J&J &J vaccine is the one that best suits the uh, portable locations and the advancement to sites outside of um, where you need a very sophisticated deep freeze type of uh, storage condition. So we are very interested in, in that program and uh, we think we are are uh, hopefully in, in good shape in terms of being able to participate. We're also doing a number of things within government contracts. Um, we are doing a pilot right now with, with HRSA billing. HRSA is a program in the US that offers free PCR tests. We're working with one of our lab partners and we're doing some piloting of the HRSA billing program. And uh, that is a program where the government will pay us for testing PCR, only the PCR, but it is an important program. We are actually seeing a little bit of, uh, unfortunately, a little uptake on some numbers. Uh, there is a belief that spring break may also, may also increase the numbers of, uh, of positive cases. Uh, but the rollout of the vaccine is also going to be important uh, that we participate there and also that we can participate in measuring the immune response. And we're excited about 
both of those opportunities. The other thing that's going to play an important role, we believe, is our neutral um, operations and the fact that we have, as reopening the economy, there's going to be a lot of concern about making sure that surfaces and areas are clean. We have a number of discussions going on right now with institutions, schools, universities, et cetera, about the use of Nutrell as a product for, um, for deep cleaning, the return to the, and the reopening of the economy. So those are all uh, things that we're excited about. We see some great opportunity in that area. Um, also wanted to mention the fact that uh, we're now gonna move in and we've been pivoting for the last number of months, but we're now getting very close to pivoting into our ability to offer telediagnostics. And with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Glenn Copeland. Dr. Copeland has been advising us in this area, as well as using consultants that we have in the US for this program as well. And Dr. Copeland, I would like to ask you to maybe just take it a few minutes and explain to people what they will see when they, when they come and get a experience in telediagnostics through, through uh, Metavol. Sure, thanks, Doug. Um, I think one of the, uh, uh, the long-term objectives of, of Medivolve um, is moving us out of uh, strictly a COVID uh, testing business where we um, you know, have been leading the pack, if you will, in um, off-site pop-up centers uh, doing um, anti you know, rapid antigen testing, antibody testing, um, and PCR testing. Um, you know, with over 200,000 people who have uh, accessed our pop-up centers over the past number of months at uh, collection sites, it was a natural uh, for, for us to evolve into medical diagnostics. Um, and um, the, the, the world of telemedicine, telediagnostics has really been transformed uh, through the pandemic. Uh, people are frightened as, as well as well they should be of going to doctors' offices. They don't want to be around other sick people. They don't want to uh, be exposed. They don't want to be in hospitals unless they really have to be. And uh, we saw this opportunity oh about uh, five six months ago when uh, uh, we started gathering and uh, people started asking about testing for blood sugar, testing cholesterol, testing the things that are going to be around for for uh, thousands more years um, uh, once COVID has been beaten. And so um, it, it was a natural evolution for us to, um, to start looking into medi medical telediagnostics. So our machines that are proprietary to Medivolve um, will, will not only be uh, the ability to talk to a doctor, uh, but it will be uh, the ability for people to come into our pop-up centers um, with a, um, a medical um, um, a support worker, if you will, um, who will have a number of different devices attached to our machine um, that can look in your ear, look in your throat, um, take a close-up of, of a skin lesion, uh, do the things that are most common that people are concerned about, people um, who uh, want to check out uh, a sore throat and want to have a strep test. So we sort of look at this as the opportunity uh, to get in and get out 10, 15 minutes, see your doctor online. Um, if necessary, a prescription can be, can be written. Um, a prescription can be sent to, to the Medivolve pharmacy people uh, who literally can drop ship it uh, to your home within 24 hours. Uh, if you will, one-stop shopping uh, for the common ailments from sore throats to infected ears, um, to skin lesions, uh, to abrasions and, and minor accidents. So uh, we're really excited by this. Um, the, the program uh, looks like it's going to start off in, in New York, uh, in the Hamptons and uh, Montauk and East Hampton. Um, we expect that uh, with um, 70 or 80 sites up and running over the next four to six months, uh, we should have uh, a medical um, telediagnostics in every unit um, very, very quickly. Uh, I think, you know, one of the things that you said earlier is, um, you know, we're going to start morphing over into the immunology side where um, the new testing that you've mentioned, uh, you and I are both well aware of this uh, great new uh, opportunity. Um, it's a new blood test where we can actually measure um, how 
your immune system has responded to the vaccine and or if you've had COVID-19, are your antibodies levels still strong? Are they still there? Um, it's not just being able to do the test, but gathering the data that we'll be able to utilize in the world of medicine. Um, this data, um, as, we, as we get further and further out, will be used by vaccine companies, the government, um, and et cetera, trying to determine um, you know, how long these vaccines efficacy will last for. So uh, Medivolve is, is doing exactly what our name says. We're evolving into a, a true healthcare company. Uh, COVID uh, will still be a, a major part of this for a while, but I think the, the ability to deliver healthcare in a community setting, um, in the Simon Malls, um, where people can drive up, park within uh, 100 yards of, of the little uh, pop-up center and uh, get their day-to-day -day medical needs met very quickly, thoroughly, and uh, uh, in and out, uh, hopefully within 15, 20 minutes is going to change the, uh, the evolution of medicine. And Dr. Copeland, because of the portable nature of the technology that uh, you mentioned, uh, can you tell a little bit about the reach out we can do within the community? Yes, sir. So, you know, Doug, the, the beauty with our with this new um, uh, stand that we put together, the the computer with the um, with the attachments, and these attachments are stethoscopes and looking into the eye and looking into the ear, um, magnifying lights that can magnify uh, things on the skin. Uh, these can be used in, in uh, senior citizens' homes. These can be used at, uh, um, at training areas. These can be used um, in locker rooms where you have athletes. These can be used um, in, in, in nursing homes where a doctor may not be available 24 seven, but because of our new system, the doctor is, is, is really down the hall available uh, where um, he can do a, a, a terrific examination of somebody who's uh, having problems. Um, you know, as we evolve down the road, there'll be EKGs that we can do off of the machine. The doctor can look and evaluate these EKGs. Um, and, and we're expecting as, as we evolve again down the road into a mini doctor office available 24 seven. And, um, uh, the, the results that we've seen across America and Canada is patients, you know, really find the safety of, of um, doing telemedicine in a very small closed area where there's not other patients, where you're not being exposed to other people who might be carrying, uh, God forbid, COVID or, or other, you know, flu viruses. Um, so the, the potential is quite endless. Our, our little, uh, telemedicine uh, stand uh, is about 20 pounds. Uh, it's made to pack up in a suitcase where you can roll it. And so um, it, it's um, it, even for people who are domiciled in a, in a, in a home where they can't uh, get access, uh, we, we can even do home care calls. And so we're bringing the doctor to the home as opposed to taking this person to a doctor. Right. Dr. Copeland, you mentioned the pharmacy license, and I just wanted to let uh, people know the pharmacy license, we are in due diligence with uh, acquiring that license and that pharmacy that's uh, based in Las Vegas. The important thing about that is that pharmacy is part also of a network, a referral network. So every pharmacy has certain license requirements throughout the different states. In this particular case, uh, we have virtually national coverage through the network of referral that, uh, that this pharmacy is attached to, we'd be able to fill prescriptions virtually anywhere um, within the, the United States and be able to take that prescription that the patient gets generated at either one of our portable sites or at one of our reach out to the community sites and uh, is able to have that prescription filled and sent to the home literally the, the next day. So Which it's, I think uh, is, it's a one-stop shop for what they require. Yeah, I, I think that... I think that's one of the most exciting parts of uh, what we're doing is it's diagnosing as a one side, getting treatment uh, on a quick and easy basis, Doug, is, is so important to the Medivolve patient. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, the script is in and, and shipped out, uh, uh, you know, so that, um, you know, by 10, 11, the next morning, your medication's there um, and you, you never had to leave your house. You never had to do anything more than visit the Medivolve pop-up. Uh, medical shop, if you will. 
Okay, great. Um, as I mentioned, I'll just uh, recap on a few of the things that uh, we're going. The Marvel Diagnostics, first of all, thank you, uh, Dr. Kavapur, for your update and Lila for your update. Um, you know, it's uh, interesting and exciting to see that you're making your advances and we will certainly keep people up to date with uh, as your results come in and we move closer to uh, what will we'll hopefully be a successfully commercialized product to capture uh, not only but a number of different breath uh, or respiratory type uh, viruses. Um, from the collection site standpoint, again, we are seeing a, we have seen that drop in, in the demand from January to February, but we are seeing a steady state. Matter of fact, we're seeing a little bit of an increase um, in the testing in the last uh, little, bit of, little bit of time. And there is a concern that there may be a greater demand coming over spring break. Uh, we are working with the um, government program through HRSA to consider the free PCR program that is being offered. And we are talking to the government at many levels in terms of being able to participate in a broader way within the, um, the entire government program for PCR. In their case, it is still very focused on PCR testing, which we have the full capability of doing. Um, we talked about the vaccines. They remain an important uh, push for us. And we are confident that um, you know, all being successful and with the Again, when you're dealing with government, it never seems to be quick, but uh, we're hoping to hear something uh, important in the next little while with uh, our ability to support the uh, vaccine program and the rollout of vaccines in the US. On the neutral side, um, we hope to be able to report some uh, large institutional sales in the very near future. And um, I thank Dr. Copeland for bringing us up to date on our telediagnostics and the, um, what I think is certainly going to be a disruptive future model for providing access and convenience for basic medical services, as well as being able to uh, receive prescriptions, et cetera, in a very convenient way. And also being able to get back to our hundreds of thousands of patients that we have to be able to offer them up services beyond what we've done with COVID and certainly as a company moving, moving beyond COVID. So with that, um, I'm gonna thank everyone who participated today and uh, we will keep everyone up to date with what's happening. I know there was some questions about our investor awareness campaign. It started up last week and it will continue for a number of weeks now. And uh, we're hoping we'll see some good results in increasing awareness of uh, Metavolve in the, in the stock community, in the investment community, and um, see some, some general you know, good news around that program as well. So thank you everyone. And uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you.